Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place cares for children from all corners of the country. A home from home, offering hope at times of uncertainty and strength in times of need. Inviting us into their world, we witness difficult decision-making, life-changing surgery, and powerful success stories. In the emergency department, we never know what's going to come through the door next. Theatre staff have to be ready for surgery at any given time. I see you treat critically ill children 24-7. Following the journey of families and their children undergoing vital and life-saving treatment, welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Since birth, 10-year-old Jack Waters has been living with chronic renal complications. Today draws him closer to a brighter future as he meets with Dr. Hickey ahead of surgery. And for Jack then, surgery-wise, he, you know, is it three-hour surgery or...? About three hours, three hours. Kira. You yes. know, he's yes. in great shape, though. Is, I mean, you yes. know, he couldn't be in better condition for yeah. the operation. So, you know, and you've seen some of the young fellas flying around Back out here. there. Yes. They, they bounce back very quickly Good. after. Yes. You'll be limping around Bowman, okay. and the fellow okay. will be uh, eating his dinner and flying around the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, it's, 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 it's obviously it's surgery. It's a general anaesthetic. It's yes. not without its risk. But the, the, it, it, this is a very easy decision. Yes, no, I know he that. He has yes. to have a chance, but yes. it's perfect to be able to do it preemptively because yes. your know, dialysis does take a lot out of everybody at yes. home. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a whole family. Is no, I'm very conscious of that. If yeah. we can avoid that, and we yeah. have avoided it because it wouldn't just impact on himself, myself, it would impact on Oh, the whole lot, everybody. yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And those kind of first 24 hours after surgery, is he kind of quite sedated after that? He would be on morphine. <laughs> He's got morphine, yes. Yep. Uh, but he won't be completely out of it because we need to keep the fine balance. Yes. Uh, where we don't overdo things. Yeah. So we don't want to go back to ICU or anything. Oh, exactly. Okay. Uh, he will be on decent pain relief. Yes. He'll be on decent um, dose of morphine for the next next few days. Okay. And um, there will be tubes hanging around and yep. bothering him and the rest of it, but that's okay part of it. So yes. All going well, he would hopefully be in a good shape to go home. By yes. that stage, my mom is allowed to come in. All right. Well, it'll be Tony who's going to be with him for Not that good. first week well, anyway. You can cook dinner, you can cook dinner. <laughs> of course I can It's all coming out now. What else will he do? What else will he do? <laughs> Not only will Jack receive a new healthy kidney, but he has also be confirmed a perfect match with someone very special, his mom, Kira. He was born only with one kidney and that's obviously its, fun its function has depreciated to the point of where it's nearly non-existent and he'd be on dialysis next year in the event that he doesn't get a kidney transplant. The kidney is essential. It would remove all the toxins, it would remove most of the fluids and, and if you have renal failure, everything goes wrong. So we try to keep um, children alive and well with either preemptive transplantation or dialysis. At all costs, we try to avoid dialysis. Dialysis is a stressful treatment for anyone concerned. The eventual goal is always a transplant. He went on to the kidney list, the donors list. So we've known for about 10 years here, 10 and a half, <coughs> a bit more. So we've known for about 10 years this is going to happen. So we're always hoping that we, he, would, he would get a kidney transplant. Nothing came through that initially. And uh, then we decided that her, his mum might be a match. And of course, his mum was a perfect match. We were very lucky, because if that hadn't happened, then we would be waiting on the donor list for quite, could be waiting a long time. Our biggest concern is that Jack would be definitely on dialysis by Easter of next year. Oh, yes. And that's the last thing we wanted to occur. Uh, so we were hoping to have got a kidney transplant prior to then. That's true, yeah. Kidney transplants from a, a live-related donor is better in every sense for pediatrics. There is a better long-term survival uh, for the kidneys. Okay. Jack wouldn't be as tall, say, as his sister or his brother. 
Yeah, you have to knock up the semen. Yeah. yeah. So when he gets the new kidney, ho oh ho. Bang. Whoosh, get bigger. So the objective of obviously of the kidney as well is it'll help his growth as well. You know, which is good. As Kira undergoes surgery in Beaumont, Jack is preparing for his trip to theatre. This morning we started the regime medications. And it stings a little bit, might feel a little bit cold. Okay. I don't feel anything. Doesn't feel anything. We gave Jack a drug called basiliximab. When an organ goes into the body, it's seen as a foreign object. And we give them this drug to suppress their immune system, to make it look like the organ basically is, is part of their own system, that they're not going to kind of reject it straight away and that they will accept it into their body. This is the most important one. This is the one to help you keep your kidney. Yep. Okay. Feel okay? Yep. Good. His mum is in where? What hospital? Bowman. She's in Bowman Hospital and she's having her operation done at the present time. She started at 8.30, it's now 10 and Jack's operation should occur around 12 o'clock. Jack all going well in the next hour and a half or two would go to theatre. In the day ward, 14-year-old Loken is also waiting to be called for surgery. A few weeks ago, my friend, I was messing around with him and he lost his temper and punched me in the nose and broke my nose and me too. When he did come home after it happened, his whole face was all swelled. So we said we'd bring him down to the hospital and they said it's fractured and there's a, the like an abrasion or something there. So he has to have it done. Lorcan presented to us in the clinic. In this instance, we examined him and we grade the five-point scaling for the degree of the trauma and we could see clinically that he has a fracture of the nasal bones. He needs manipulation of the nasal bones which is usually done under general anesthetic. Later on go down and let them do an operation on my nose and hopefully it goes well. They're going to put it back into place so hopefully it will heal. They said if it doesn't heal they will have to put a metal plate on the nose. They won't know till down the road if it's after healing. Any questions you have to ask? Yeah. Yeah. So you feel the point is still a which side you feel it's still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions you have to ask us? No, no. Yeah. There may be a splint that we put it on the nose just to hold yeah. the bones in space. Yeah. It will come out, say, in around five days to a week. Yeah. You can take it out yourself. Sometimes it comes loose by itself. Yeah. All right, I'll see you shortly. Okay. In the accident and emergency department, six-month-old Kate is having breathing difficulties. Well, on Friday she was, and um, she sort of had a little bit of a cough. Um, I just put it down to teething and then on um, Saturday she started to have vomiting and uh, diarrhea so I brought her to the GP on Monday and he thought maybe it was just would be viral because she had a high temperature with it there was no obvious signs and um, he said if she wasn't feeling any better to bring her back today so I brought her today and he sent me gave me a letter to come in here her oxygen level read at 88% which would be a little bit low and it would um, determine that the baby was having some distress with her breathing. To support her breathing we commenced her on 10 litres of oxygen via the face mask which she wore and then we put her on 2 litres of nasal oxygen via the nasal cannula which we taped to her face to help improve her breathing and to help with her oxygenation. Kate is sent for a chest x-ray to help the team determine her condition. You've had a big day today, haven't you? <laughs> She's doing well though. There we go, Mom. So you can pop her down in the bed there now. We were worried that she might have maybe a viral infection. We also had it in the back of our minds that she may have a pneumonia because of her low saturations, her increased work of breathing, her temperature and her history of being unwell for five days. Done. 
The chest x-ray has shown us that she does have a pneumonia on the right hand side of her chest. She is working very hard. You can see a lot of uh, infection into her lungs, especially in her right side, and especially when you see it on the top side, she has completely colla collapsed a bit of her lung and got a mark infection in it. Uh, I would say she maybe started as a bronchitis last couple of days, but she has got worse because her work of breathing was significant. She looked very grey. She was not uh, there, not enough oxygen going in. She was working hard. She was grunting, and these extra respiratory symptoms that really indicate to there is more than a, a simple br uh, bronchitis. From the X-ray, she's uh, we just found that she has a. Uh, right side pneumonia in her lung. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. I presume she's maybe having it for the last couple of days. Since that's the time when she started to deteriorate, and when she started to have coughing more, she can't control the fever, and that's what they do actually. So uh, we are going to admit her for keep a couple of days, give her antibiotics. We'll monitor her, we'll see how it goes, and we'll take it from there. Any questions for us? Uh, no, I'm all right for the moment. Happy, it's yeah. great. Thanks. Yeah. Let it all sink in. No worries. Yeah. <laughs>
and will be transferred to an isolated area to recover. When Kate came in, she had um, increased work of breathing, increased respiratory effort. She wasn't taking her bottles and um, she had temperatures as well. It's quite serious for, that, for this size of the baby. Her oxygenation is coming down less than 90, which is we don't like it less than 92. When she came in, she was commenced on oxygen therapy via her nasal prongs and um, IV antibiotics for treatment of the chest infection and also IV fluids because she wasn't tolerating her bottles. Well, initially when I came in, I was, I was just I was sent in from my GP to come in because her temperature and that. And, uh, you know, as I came in, I just presumed they were going to do a check maybe in and out, maybe in a couple of hours. So we were surprised when... You know, we heard that it was <coughs> serious enough, like with her infection and stuff. Oh, God bless. She's not as panting or anything. She's a lot more relaxed, certainly this morning anyway, and she's more alert, like her eyes are brighter and stuff, compared to when she came in, like she was very listless. This is starting to annoy her now because she's... Yesterday and the day before, it didn't bother because she, did, well, she was so listless, like, but the fact that she's moving her arms and stuff, she's grabbing all the wires and stuff and she's trying to, she keeps pulling it down. She's much improved, she's been in for two days, she's really improving, we're reducing her oxygen therapy, um, her temperature has settled, she continues on her IV antibiotics. Luckily she's drinking which is good to keep her hydrated and we give her some physio just to open up uh, her lung more. Going heading in the right direction, <laughs> that's the main thing. Um, the doctor will see her again tomorrow and decide then and talk about going home with everything. Like, you know, she, they're going to wean her off the oxygen today, and then once that's, um, they're happy enough with that, then they said they'll see her tomorrow to see how she's getting on. We're hoping that she'll be discharged home over the weekend. Having broken his nose, Lorcan now prepares for a corrective procedure in theatre. He has a very uh, minor deformity and uh, usually in children we prefer to manipulate these bones because if we leave it like that it will be a permanent deformity. So we prefer within three weeks any minor deformity that we notice, we prefer to manipulate it. It's a clinical decision uh, and we prefer to do it as soon as possible to avoid the bone being fixed in this position. Procedure takes around, from the beginning, around 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, not more than that. Dawkins' nasal bones are manipulated back into place and a metal stent is then positioned over the area to protect it. I didn't feel too bad, I just woke up like I was waking up every one in the morning. I just remember getting the injection into my arm just to put me to sleep and a mask on over my face, over my face and then just conked off then. I see it, yeah. It's not too bad. I like it. I was asleep when he came back and I asked him, he said he feels his breathing is a bit better from it. Just said he just pushed it back into place and just to leave that on. And the child goes home at the end of the day uh, and can go to school after that, no problem. Just a precaution about the contact sports for a few weeks or later on to avoid the refracture again of the nasal bones. It is a long day you now. But other than that, thank God it's all over now, so we just have to wait and see now will it heal back up and that that stays at him. He's just time to go home to get something to eat. Yeah, big work. Another half, half, half an hour or so, or maybe less. When he goes home, after five days, it's been to be removed and he's for review with his GP. Proved to be life changing surgery completed, Jack's dad receives news that his son is on his way to recovery. We got on very well, um, all his bloods are going the right way. The medical team did a fantastic job. They're exceptionally comfortable with him and his progress. His bloods are all registering in a positive way, which is fantastic. 
So over the next kind of week or so, obviously we want Jack to become more well himself. Um, the first couple of days are quite crucial. He will have one-to-one -one nursing. Um, he'll most likely have his own doctor um, at hand as well. What's fantastic here is that um, the nephrology doctors stay with the patient on the night of transplant. So as you saw, Teeth was in the operating room and he spends the night in the hospital with the child. Uh, so he's, a, he's, he's, he's within two minutes of the, if there's a drop in blood pressure or a, a drop in urea output, he, he's available to assess. There are all sorts of small things and big things can happen, so we just need to be very careful um, uh, with immunosuppression and his kidney function and blood pressure and everything else. You just squash it into your mouth. He's quite uncomfortable at the moment, he's quite, he's quite sore. He's a lot of painkillers. That makes him itchy as well, so he's scratching his face a lot. So he's got a little um, little uh, button he can press to get another shot of morphine, which sounds amusing. And uh, he, uh, he's doing that. Kira's, Kira's fine. I was speaking to her this morning. She's exactly the same. Um, she's nausea as well. Um, she hasn't eaten in two days. Uh, feels quite sick. And she's a lot of pain as well, uh, which is a pity, but she is. Um, so she'll be fine, hopefully, tomorrow. And well, she'll be on the mend then and Jack should be the, hopefully a lot better tomorrow as well. Last week prior to discharge it's all education for the parents, they need to be able to care for Jack with his new kidney to be sure that he's taken adequate amount of fluids to keep his kidney working and that he's passing enough amounts of urine as well and that his bloods aren't proven. The kidney is doing the job that his old kidneys didn't do. Yeah, it's going to be a great kidney for Jack, I mean he's going to get a long, long life out of this. The average life expectancy of that kidney will be 20 years, 20 to 22 years. You'll be at least 21 before you'd require anything further. In fact, hopefully you're 30 something. So it'd be fantastic. So it gives him a lifestyle that you know, we won't have to be in here in dialysis or anywhere else. We hope to get him home on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, a day before Christmas Eve. And the reason for that obviously is Santa. Uh, he wants to be home himself because he keeps saying, can I go home? <laughs> All going well, I would hope that he would be out sometime next week.